people of the internet, my name is Johnny and welcome to a FNAF news video talking about Security Breach. The long-awaited February patch for the game just rolled out the other day and I'm gonna be here and explain all the changes that happened. Because I don't know if you guys have taken a look at what exactly has changed, but a whole lot of stuff has changed. So this might be a long video, I'm gonna try and explain everything thoroughly. I also went into the game to get footage of most of the major changes so you can visually see exactly what changed. But yeah, this is a very big patch. There's a lot of stuff to talk about, so let's not waste any more time. If you're brand new, please subscribe. It means the world. Also hit the like button, and let's hop into the patch. So the other day, Steerwool released a blog post saying patch 1.05 is now available. Hi everyone, thank you all for your patience. Although we had expected to release in early to mid-February, the number of fixes we wanted ultimately took longer to do because of the additional and extensive testing that followed. We've doubled down and made a lot of progress in terms of quality of life improvements, gameplay balances, and of course, bug fixes. Changes we referenced in our previous blog post are all present. Regarding on-disk size for PC users, for this patch, it's a very small change. That said, we did find a way to dramatically decrease the size, but that fix is going to take much longer to test to make sure we get it right as it will touch every single part of the game. It came down to this, do we delay the patch further for that fix, or do we release the many fixes that we have and patch on disk size later? We decided to release the fixes we've got rather than delay any longer since there are so many meaningful changes. Below is a comprehensive list of every effort put into this patch 1.05. So it seems like there's going to be another patch after this one that will address you know, the size of the game, because it's like 70 to 80 gigabytes, which is freaking massive. So sometime very soon in the future, I think we can expect another patch that will bring that size of the game down, which is always nice, because it is a very, very big game, and it takes up a lot of space. So thank you, Steerwolf, for that. Um, and of course, I'll let you guys know when that patch does come out. But for right now, let's go through the comprehensive list of all the changes in this patch. So first up are the universal changes across all the platforms. Added a save station that can only be used in overtime, which is after 6 a.m., located on the second floor of the atrium. So I'm sure you guys are aware, after you get to 6 a.m. and you decide to stay in the Pizzaplex, you can no longer access any save stations. So if you die, you go all the way back to 6 a.m., and that really made a lot of people upset, me included, and thankfully it seems like Steel Wool has addressed that and added a singular save station in the atrium. Added a limit of 54 manual saves, so now you can only have 50 save slots in the game. Adjusted all cinematic cameras to receive current gamma and brightness settings. Added the skip function to most major cinematics. Yeah, that was very annoying. You couldn't skip any of the cutscenes even though it did say press E to skip, so thankfully they addressed that. Added color coding to the daycare generators as wires similar to the parts and service. Added in a loading screen when you start and or load in the game. Enter and exit arcades or have a longer loading time between areas. If you played Help Wanted, you may recognize these loading screens. It has the same helpy animation in the bottom corner. And then it also has some tips that flash across the loading screen every now and then. Added in Comedy Bot's comedic routine. Steerwall, thank you so much. I love you for this. Here's a quick clip of some of his comic routine. I won't play the full thing because it is kind of long. I just rolled in and boy are my wheels tired. As you might have noticed, I am a robot. You know what the difference between humans and robots is. Humans are like Leia. I am going to get old and die. Robots are like, I will outlive you all. Added in a Faz Watch camera instruction card in the lobby to further encourage using the cameras to plan routes through the obstacles. Added in new message icon art for when players pick up message bags. Reduced the staff bots and animatronics' stun length when hit with the Fazer Blaster and adjusted for the Fazer Blaster's cooldown. Added in new spotlight and signage for the trash compactor in the kitchen. Added in new atrium signage for the loading dock bathrooms. Added in new 
no Chica signs added to the gates that require her voice box to open. Similar to how you needed Monty's claws to open the no Monty signed gates, you now need the Chica voice box to open the new no Chica signs. Added in more hiding spots in the lobby. As you can see from the video, I took a look around and yeah, they added quite a bit of new hiding spots in the lobby, so hopefully that can make it easier for people just starting out in the beginning of the game. Adjusted burn traps boss battle to be more balanced. I didn't play through the whole boss battle, but I did notice that the blobs tentacles came out a bit faster, so I'm guessing they probably shortened the battle. Though I don't know for sure, so don't quote me on that. Adjusted the light radius on all staff bots to be more performant. Adjusted and optimized the faz watch to be more performant. And adjusted the conveyor belt speed in Princess Quest 3. So those are all of the universal changes. Now we're going to move on to specifically the PlayStation 4. There's actually only one change for the PS4. Adjust the default PS4 gamma and brightness to accurately reflect the intended lighting. Now we move on to the changes for PC. Added in DLSS and ray tracing as separate options in the video menu settings. Fixed an issue where the trophy time achievement would not unlock after acquiring all the other achievements on Steam. And finally, minor reduction to the overall on-disc size. And now we move on to the bug fixes. And as you can see, this is a hefty list. So honestly, I'm not going to read through all of these changes. If you want to slow down the video or give it a pause to read through them, feel free. But yeah, these are a lot of bug fixes and I'm super, super happy and proud of Steel Wolf for fixing everything. I took a look through all of these and they're actually super, super helpful. So thank you, Steel Wolf. I know there's a lot of bugs in this game and hopefully this is only the start of the bug fixing and hopefully this can let people have a better experience with the overall game. And here are some bug fixes for the PC and PS4 versions of the game. Once again, their bug fixes not all that exciting, so I'm not going to read them out loud. Feel free to pause the video and have a look through. Finally, these are some bug fixes for the PlayStation 5. Once again, if you care, pause the video, have a look through. I know it's super easy to have a look at this huge list of bugs and say, wow, look at how buggy this game was. But honestly, I think it's more important to look at the long list and think, wow, Look at how dedicated Steel Wool is to making this game as great as it can be in fixing the bugs. At least that's my thoughts on it, and finally here are some localization fixes. Seems like it's mostly text related, so yeah, those are the final changes to the game in this first patch. Jumping in quick because I just realized I forgot to talk about something that's not in the patch notes but was changed in the recent patch. First up, it looks like the characters themselves had a graphical upgrade in the textures department. Thanks to ML Spence over on Twitter, link down below, go check them out. We can see the changes before the patch and now after the patch to the textures of the characters. Interestingly enough, it also looks like some characters have received blood on them, so there goes people's silly theory of PlayStation, you know, censoring the game and everything like that. Yeah, looking at some of the new textures for the characters, they just look absolutely incredible. Steerwell honestly did a fantastic job with these characters. They look so, so, so good, especially now after the patch. Finally, speaking of the characters, it looks like Monty has been fixed. Thanks to a clip from the FNAF Lost Media Twitter account, you can see that Monty now correctly spawns and has pretty decent pathfinding in places like the daycare and Monty Golf after being shattered. And and this didn't happen before. So now he does properly crawl around and chase after you if he spots you. It's very terrifying actually because the dude no longer has any legs because we stole them to fix up Freddy and now he just chases after you. It's terrifying. But yeah, those are some small changes I missed, but also very interesting ones that I did want to bring up. I just forgot to in the main recording, so... I am leaving now, say goodbye to editing Johnny Blocks. One more thing, the two endoskeletons you encounter when you go down to the burn trap boss fight, they activate now when you activate the generator, so watch out for those sneaky buggers. Once you enter the FNAF 6 location, they do disappear, so once you get in the building, you're safe, but again, Watch out once you pass them, because they will activate. And those are all of the changes. Once again, as you can see, this was a big patch, um, and I think it's very important to congratulate Steel Wool on releasing such a massive patch. I've seen a lot of people say that they were slow with this, you know, we're coming up to three months now since the game's release. Man, already three months? What the hell? But I also think it's important to realize they made such a big patch 
because they're dedicated to this game and the fan base and making it perfect for all the fans. They already said in this patch that they're going to release another one soon, hopefully uh, that addresses the size of the game on PC and other devices. So once again, uh, I'll let you know when that happens. Subscribe so you stay up to date with all of the news. This is a very good start. Stairwell, I want to tell you that right now. Obviously, the game released in a not so good state, <laughs> to say it lightly, and I can tell you guys are passionate about, again, making it the best it can be, and this is a very good start. Thank you. So I do really hope that we can see even more patches release in the future. I am aware that Steelwool is currently working on DLC for the game. I will make a video on that very soon because I have a few ideas, uh, a few hopes. And I'd also like to know what you guys would want to see in DLC for the game in the comments down below. Because like I said, I will be making a video about what I do want to see. But that is going to be it for this video. Kind of a long outro, but I'm very passionate about this game. I do really love Security Breach. And so when you see something like this happen... I do want to congratulate Sue Wool, because even though there were a lot of bugs, as you can tell from the patch notes, they're passionate. But yeah, that's going to do it for now. Thank you guys so much for checking out another video, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.